Hello, I'm John Stuvey. I'm a manager of Automation Anywhere Training, and this is Introduction to IQBot. Uh, first of all, when we start, start talking about IQBot, we're talking about moving uh, semi-structured and unstructured data into structured data or digital text. And uh, there's different ways of doing that. The, the, the normal way, uh, with as far as RPA is concerned, is using OCR, uh, which has limited support and some limited um, features within strictly RPA. Uh, there are lots of different vendors in the intelligent o OCR space, and these are there's some limitations to that as far as just the complexity and the investment it takes to get up and going with those solutions. So we've gone through and found the best of both worlds. Um, we've gone worked through 14 years of our domain expertise in RPA to combine the right set of AI technologies in a cognitive solution that can be trained and operational at scale with about 60% straight through processing within a few weeks. Our computer vision uh, uses AI technologies like that which is used for self-driving cars. We use natural language processing and fuzzy logic, uh, machine learning, language translation, sentiment analysis, and chatbot. Those three uh, can be leveraged using third-party AI libraries through our RPA tool. So the integration of both uh, cognitive technologies like computer vision and fuzzy log logic and machine learning along with language translation, sentiment analysis, and chat allow us to handle business processes across several domains. Uh, what really makes us more efficient is the cost it takes to get set up. Uh, with intelligent OCRs, there's a, a long lag time. Uh, we can get IQBot up an hour, a couple hours per bot for different types of, of document training, uh, can get them up and, and moving so that we can produce uh, the, the benefits that we have from transitioning from semi-structured data to structured data within the automation processes. Uh, this is the, the typical process uh, before, uh, where with, which results in about a 30 to 40% straight through processing. Uh, people have to classify documents and sort them out. Then they go through an OCR attempt and processing failed docs requires people to look at the documents and make a determination whether it was a good scan or not. And then they validate that processes or the outputs of those documents through the back office. Uh, at the end of that, those two manual processes, we can go back to automation and trigger the approval workflow. And then people at the end can, can, uh, can finalize that review. Uh, with IQBot and RPA, uh, we have uh, automated the extract and digitize using the cognitive technologies we have. The majority of that work is done with uh, just RPA, with, with our cognitive services. And then after the training of that, uh, the bot handles those documents completely on its own. Uh, there is a human in the loop for any failed documents, but as they go through that validation process, it uses machine learning to inform the, the cognitive solution uh, how to, to process uh, similar errors in the future. So over time, straight through processing grows and grows. Uh, after the process is finished, then we validate and trigger like we would before. And then we can also have assisted approvals process where a bot and a human can work together. This is pretty much what every business process have, has in common, data capture, enrichment, validation, processing, doing the actual work, reconciling that to make sure we have good audit and accuracy, and then analyzing reporting. Our cognitive solution, IQBots, helps us with the data capture, helps us with the data enrichment. All those things can occur prior to the robotic process automation and then a smooth handoff between the two. Uh, this is the real benefit of using our cognitive solution in accordance with our RPA solution. So um, next thing I want to do is just go through how, we, how, how this starts. How can we start an IQ by process by going through a learning instance or what we call training alert learning instance. Uh, first off, we need to have pretty good quality documents. We need to have them in a, in a valid image format. Could be either vector or raster or combination. Uh, TIFF, PNG, JPEG, vector, all those are different image formats that we support. We also support regular uh, vector or raster PDF files or even plain text PDF files. It's best to use original scans rather than scans of scans. And it's best to scan at a fairly high DPI or 300 DPI is what we recommend. Documents should be less than 10 megabytes and should, be, should have a fairly structured, um, maybe a semi-structured format. And each document should be in a separate file. 
The process we're going to move through as we go through this is to create the learning instance, classify it, and let the, the cognitive solution go through a classification step. Uh, train the documents and let, let the uh, process learn uh, where to find the information that's looking to extract. And then finally move that cognitive solution into production where we're working with uh, real uh, documents that have been scanned and removing them through the IQ bot. So with that, I'd like to go back to um, my demo portion. And today I'm going to be using the community edition of IQ bot. Uh, with this, we have the ability to get started by creating a new uh, learning instance. And the first part of this opens up the learning instances portion of the IQBot uh, control room. Okay, so we're gonna create a new learning instance and this new learning instance needs to have a name. Uh, what I'm going to do with this learning instance is process a set of invoices. So I'm going to call my learning instances, my learning instance invoices for Imagine. I can provide a, a description further of what this learning instance is going to work through. And then I need to create the document type. We also call this the domain. In here, we select invoices, and then we can select different types of languages if we want to. When we select invoices at the bottom, we get the different types of information we can extract uh, from an invoice. And these are the top three are selected by default. And there's additional uh, fields we can get. And in an invoice, what we usually see, and let me bring up an example of an invoice here. Uh, this is what an invoice would look like. There's uh, the top part of the screen is the form. And these things occur once per document, including some things at the bottom that occur once per document. And then there's repeating rows, and these are called the table part of the document, where we want to capture each row from this. So we have two sections in this document when we work through it. We have the sections for the common form fields, and then we have the section for the table or repeated fields. Uh, for this, I'm going to select invoice date, invoice number, invoice total. I'm also going to select billing address and payment terms. So we have an understanding of when we're supposed to pay this invoice and how long. For the repeated segment, I'm just going to capture the item description, item total, and quantity. And that sets up the domain and tells us what the output's going to be. When we get our output file from the IQBot, we'll have columns for each one of these fields in that output. So we, we've standardized now the headers for our CSV files. The next thing I need to do is browse and find a selection of documents. And uh, if we had uh, many documents, we'd want to choose a representative sample. And I know from experience that these three are a representative sample of the different documents we have available for this uh, exercise. So we're going to choose three and send those up to the IQ bot. And that in includes the creation of the learning instance. Now, when I click on create the instance, uh, what happens is it uploads, it creates the, the the package or the boundaries for that image within IQBot, and we'll be able to now describe that under that learning instance name. Now it's taking these documents that have been uploading it, analyzing it. It's going through a classification, which things occur in which places, which labels occur in each places. It does some semantic analysis and aliases, and then it's going to return us to the place where we can continue to train our IQBot. And with this, it's going to open up an interface where we can see the document on one side, and then the fields we're trying to collect on the other. So here's an example of the first document, and it, it automatically formats these. If we have similar documents, it'll, it's going to group them into one. And we can see each document by clicking here on view each group. So this is invoice one, it looks like this, and we can move to the second invoice and choose either of these as the training target. And in this case, when, we, when it reveals, finishes processing what that document looks like, we'll see the, the appearance is the same, but many of the, the labels are the same format and the format of the document is similar. So it's put both of these invoices in the same, uh, in the same field. So we're gonna go back to our original, um, the, the one it picked first as its training sample and examine what it was able to do. Through its analysis of this document and documents like it, it was able to say, I'm able to confidently select the invoice date by this label. So the invoice date field has a label on the document as invoice date. And the field value is here, 22nd August 2019 or 18. 
long time ago. Uh, you'll notice in the scan, you'll have little blue lines. These are called system identified regions. So it understands there's information in these blocks and it identifies which block goes with which label automatically. So all these green check marks is IQBot saying, this is what I think is right. Please check my work. So I can check with invoice total. We have, I mean, so invoice number, it found a label called invoice no, and it found the value of 10, 20, 80. For invoice total, it found the invoice amount at the bottom and associates that with the right data. Billing address, it found a simple word, Iltron, and what I want to collect is this whole billing address. So if I can drag one of these handles and expand the box out to be able to capture the whole, all those serves within that region or SIRs. So that's good. I've corrected it a little bit. On the payment terms, the same thing. Payment terms is shown down here, and it's picking the first of two terms according to this invoice. So I'm going to drag it out to make sure we get the net 30 in addition to the 2% due in 10, 10, 10 days. So that concludes the form fields, the thing that stays static on the, on the document. Next, we're going to go to the table. And the first part of the table settings has some interesting things, some things we need to define. The first is to uh, the, the label along the table that's associated with one line and has no additional information underneath it is the best way to describe this. So item total, while it's unique for each line in the amount section, so item total here, if we look at what's found, it's find the amount column. That's fine for this, but it's got additional information below that would, might be confused with this column. If we go back and we look at other columns, the best one is quantity. It's here by itself. It qualifies one line per data item, and there's no additional information underneath it, so it's going to save us uh, with any confusion. We can also tell the bot where the table section ends. In this case, we're just going to select a label subtotal that happens at the end of the, of the repeated line section. Once we've done that, we can go and check where it's recognized the different uh, things we're looking for. So it's recognizing the column. In this column, we've got this little hyphen, and sometimes hyphens are recognized as separators, and we could, it could end up becoming two different groups. So stretching this out to cover that whole column is sometimes helpful. But it's not required. For item total, it's nothing, it'll grab this without any issues. Same thing with item quantity, it'll grab the single digits here. So at this point, we've gone through each of the different fields we're interested in capturing. We've identified and, and corrected IQBot where it might have made a poor selection. And we can actually run this through the IQBot and see the extraction results. So this is taking this document, running it through the classification system, running it through the analyzer, and pulling out information. It'll show us the document it used and then also the information it was able to extract from that document. So here's the first document, it has the one with the, the, with the scripted A logo. The information that extracted is here and we could do a quick check, as well as the table repeating sections and seeing that we're getting the full descriptions for each one. And then up at the top, we can see these arrows enabled to get to the next document. And I can click on that, wait for it to process, and then we'll display the second document and the information extracted from there. So here's the second document, again, not as stylized, but still the same information. And we're still grabbing the correct information. The address is complete, the full payment terms are complete, uh, the table repeated sections, we have the right information for each one of those. So we're done pretty good with this. And those are the only two documents in this group. So then we can go ahead and uh, go back to training. If we want to, we can export this to CSV. It'll go through and take this information and put it into a CSV file and we can check that against uh, what we're using. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to training. Oh, here's the CSV file, let's go ahead and open it. And this just previews what this would look like at the other end when it is completed, and it's gonna open it in Excel. And this is what the Excel file looks like. At, along the top of it, we see we have the same uh, data element headers as what we defined in our domain, and this is the data it extracted. For form field information, like the date, invoice number, invoice total, uh, those are always the same, so they repeat. And then the payment, the, the item description, item total, and quantity are different for each row, so it flattens the data into a single file.
And that's what we'll see on the output as well. Now we're gonna go back to training. And this takes us back to the beginning where we identified labels. And uh, when we identified the labels, we identified the, the position in the document where it's at. IQBot does a fairly good job of handling registration issues. If, the, if it was scanned slightly askew, it, it can handle that. It can also handle uh, lots of fuzziness in the images. If there's ever a time where the fuzziness of the image it impacts the resolution, IQBot will say, I wasn't able to get good data. And it'll put into what's called a validation queue, where a human can assist and help make corrections to that. And as the human is correcting those, uh, those defects in the document um, or the defects in the scan, uh, the bot's going to learn from that. So if it's something that's repeating quite a bit, a smudge on the glass of the scanning document or something like that, IQBot can actually learn from that and improve over time to actually incorporate that, uh, that defect into its, its analysis and get faster straight through processing. Okay, so now we're complete. We've gone through it. We looked at the extraction results. We've seen the information here. So we can go ahead and save this group of documents and go to the next group. So remember, we uploaded three documents. We've seen two, and now we're going to go and train on the third document, which is a slightly different style than the first. So we're going to wait for that document to load. Here's the second document from Angel Traders. And it's formatted slightly differently. And so it requires a, diff a different training or a different group to be trained. Same information, invoice date, it's finding correctly. Invoice number, it says invoice number sign as the label, but it's finding the correct information here. Invoice total, same thing down here at the bottom. It's capturing the correct label and the correct value. For billing address, we have a similar thing where it's only capturing the first name of the company. We can expand this box out again to capture all of the address field. And then come down to payment terms, and here it doesn't have the green check mark. It doesn't know, it can't find what the payment terms are. So we can inspect this invoice and see, oh, here's where the payment terms are here in the other comments label. So the highlight here is field label. If we click on the label other comments, it's going to run through a quick analysis and figure out what it thinks the correct value should be. In this case, it's handled tax rate. And that's not what we want. We want it behind here. So we can come and click the draw for this field value, click on the draw icon, and now I have a crossbar. I could take this crossbar and then expand it over the place where I expect payment term values to be. And then it associates the other comments label with this area to extract the details. So that handles that comment. For the table settings, we're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna find the best column that describes one per row and also has nothing underneath it. So quantity again, seems to be our best bet here. The next thing, we want to end the table at a certain section. And again, subtotal is the label that marks the end of the repeating rows. So we'll mark as subtotal there. And then we're just going to check to see how our labels are defined. Uh, IQBot does a good job of identifying where the breaks are. So as long as the header, in this case, the description, is can, can aligned with where things are, we're good with that. And we can check and see the extraction results of this one. just to double check and make sure that uh, our information is correct. Okay, so here's the output for the angel traders document. And we can see the information was extracted correctly along with all of the items from some item to December soup. Everything was extracted correctly so we can go back to training. And when we're back with training, we're gonna save and close this one and we'll be done with training this instance. So we're back to the training situation. So we can, we've, we've identified all of our fields. We can go and save uh, this instance as well.
So both groups have, we've reviewed and trained each group. We're gonna go back to the learning instance screen. And once it says there, we, it, it gives us information about what to do with here. And, and we can use upload documents with uh, RPA to be able to process things. We're gonna set this to close and then we're gonna set this learning instance into production. Uh, training is complete and we can set this learning instance called invoices imagine to production and now it's ready to handle documents uploaded uh, from the RPA side. So I'm gonna go to my RPA and I have a bot already uh, loaded up here that's going to go through and uh, handle these documents and upload them to the server. And the process of this is just to identify which folder my documents are in. So the folder that I'm working with here is uh, C colon IQBot sample docs invoices, which is this directory here, which has all 10 of the different documents we're gonna be working with. Uh, then we go through a loop through each file in this folder and we're using folder path as a variable to identify that. The output of this folder goes to a dictionary of strings. And if you read the fine print of there, there's two keys in this dictionary, one called name and one called extension. And we can use that in the upload process. And when we go to the upload process, it's going to communicate with the IQBot server to identify which learning instances are available. And this is from a previous, uh, and then we loop through this folder. And the output of that folder is a direct dictionary of strings. And in the fine print, it says there's a name key and an extension key uh, for the file extension. So inside this loop through files and folders, I'm using those three elements. The first one is the folder path for the directory that I'm, um, has the files. And then there's a direct dictionary variable with name key, a period, and then a dictionary uh, variable with an extension key will upload the, these documents. So with all that, I can save my bot. And I've selected the, uh, the learning instance we created here from this drop-down menu and then saved the bot. And now I'll run the bot. And it should run and upload to my, upload those documents to the IQBot server. And as it's uploading the IQBot documents to the IQBot server, we can see that now it's processing these documents. And it's in the yet to be classified, it'll go through a classified section and continually continue to uh, move through these documents as it's going through the system. So there it's received all 10 documents that I've uploaded. It'll start sorting through these documents here. When it's finished with the process, we can go into IQBot. I'm gonna create another bot to download the documents or the extractions that we were related from this. So I'm gonna create a new bot in private and create a new bot for extracting the, the information. So we're gonna call this IQBot download. To download documents, uh, we'll need to create a bot that uses the IQBot uh, download to do this. So we're gonna download all documents. For the download all documents step, we're gonna choose the learning instance name, uh, which document status it is, success or failure. You can choose sex, success, invalid, unclassified, or untrained. In this case, we wanna get the results of a good training. We're gonna paste in our cognitive output here. So that's the directory where we should see this. And I'll go ahead and delete the files on the server when it's happening and save my response to prompt assignment. Apply that and do a quick message box to uh, show the results of this process by showing the message that's stored in the prompt assignment. I'm gonna click on apply, click run. Oh, make sure I save my bot. And then click run.
success. That's what we like to see and success from my bot. And we'll see the directory that I had, the cognitive output has a list of files. Each of these lists of files has a unique identifier plus the file name that we use. So the first file that we sent it is the TIFF uh, 231, this one. If we look at the results of it, um, we can see we have a single CSV uh, with a single row on it. So this is TIFF 1. Uh, select all rows, double click to see all the data, and we've gotten all the data available for that. Uh, it also tells the truth here. So let me, let me show that one more time. Close this, open up this CSV file, and we'll see the results of the extraction from that one document. So we can expand this out and see all the columns. It has all the details from the form elements. It has the details from the repeating elements and whether or not it was successful or not comes in the output. And so these files would then be uh, the next part of the phase that's done through RPA can be used to fill out things in ERP or a CRM. And this is the results of the IQBot process. And I want to remind everybody to go be great. Have a great day.